bones. Without them, you would look like this. We have flat bones, irregularly shaped bones, short bones, and the mighty long bones. All of them working hard to keep all your muscles and organs in the right place. The first time you've seen a bone being depicted on your favorite cartoon show probably looked something like this. This is a long bone, with a shaft made up of compact bone and two ends comprised of spongy bone. But do you know which of the long bones are the longest of them all? Well, let me introduce you to the five longest bones in your body. First up, we have the ulna. The ulna is the longest and largest of the forearm bones. It provides an attachment site for many muscles acting on the wrist, forearm, and upper arm. The top of the ulna forms the elbow joint together with its fellow forearm bone, the radius, and the humerus, which is the bone of the upper arm. The ulna also forms a bony projection at the elbow called the olecranon process. The olecranon process fits into a nook called olecranon fossa, and this nifty duo prevents the elbow from hyperextending. From the elbow, the ulna gradually narrows and curves medially as it extends towards Towards the wrist. However, the ulna does not actually attach at the wrist. That job is taken care of by the radius. Well, who said the longest bones have to have all the fun? The next bone we'll be looking at is the humerus. The humerus is the longest bone in the arm and the only bone in the upper arm. He's all alone and there is nothing humerus about that. So what does it do exactly? Well, the humerus acts as an anchor for many of the muscles that manipulate the upper arm at the shoulder and the forearm at the elbow. Let's take a look at some of these next. Here on the left, you can see the deltoid muscle inserting on the upper half of the humerus. This is an example of a muscle that manipulates the upper arm at the shoulder. Here on the right, you can see that the brachialis muscle originates on the upper half of the humerus. And this is an example of a muscle that acts on the forearm at the elbow. The head of the humerus forms the glenohumeral joint with the glenoid cavity of the scapula. The glenohumeral joint is what we call a ball and socket joint. Here the head of the humerus is the ball and the glenoid cavity of the scapula is the socket. You can see this here on the diagram. The body contains only one other ball and socket joint. Can you guess where it is? Here's a hint. It's formed by one of the bones that we're going to be talking about later on this video. Below the head of the humerus is the anatomical neck, seen here in the diagram to the left. This then merges into the surgical neck, as you see here on the diagram to the right. Here the surgical neck becomes the body of the humerus as it extends towards the elbow joint and articulates with the radius and ulna bones of the forearm, as we talked about earlier in the video. Next up, the fibula. The fibula runs parallel to the larger and more complex tibia. It supports the muscles of the lower leg and stabilizes the ankle. The fibula is just a tiny bit shorter than the tibia and much thinner too. And the head of the fibula lies below the knee and forms the upper tibiofibular joint with the outer edge of the tibia as you can see here. Then from here the fibula extends slightly medially towards the ankle. And at the ankle the fibula forms a bony knob called the lateral malleolus, which you can see sticking out from the talocrural or ankle joint on the diagram here. Between the inner edge of the lateral malleolus and the outer edge of the tibia, the fibula forms the bottom of the tibiofibular joint with the tibia, and together with the tibia, fibula and talus form the talocrural joint seen here. Are you still with me? Then here's a fun fact. Tissue is often harvested from the fibula to be grafted onto other bones in the body. This is because the fibula bears so little body weight that it tends to have more bone mass than is needed to support the leg. Second to last, we have the tibia. Almost the longest bone in the body, but not quite. The tibia is commonly known as the shin bone. It is the largest and strongest of the lower leg bones. In fact, it totally hogs the limelight from its poor neighbor, the fibula. 
Let's zone in on the anatomy of the tibia. And together with the femur, it forms the knee joint, as you can see on the diagram here. And then together with the fibula and talus, the tibia also forms the ankle joint, as you can see here highlighted in green. Although it wears many hats, the tibia's main role is to support the body's weight from the knees to the ankles. This support from the tibia is essential for movements of the legs such as standing, walking, running, and jumping. Last but certainly not least is the femur. Not only is the femur the longest bone in the body, it is also the strongest and heaviest. What a show off. Let's take a look at the anatomy. The head of the femur attaches to the acetabulum in the pelvic girdle, as you can see here on the image. These two structures connect to form the hip joint, a ball and socket joint. And yes, there you go, the answer to the question we asked you when talking about the humerus earlier in the video. The ball and socket is named that way for the way the femur and acetabulum fit together. The head of the femur is the ball, whilst the acetabulum is the socket. The rounded ball shape allows the femur to move in almost any direction at the hip. The bottom end of the femur forms the knee joint with the tibia in the lower leg, which we talked about earlier. So you could say that the femur is a pretty important bone, but don't say anything to it. Otherwise it will grow an ego as large as it is. And those are the longest bones in your body. Did any of these surprise you? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to learn more about all the bones in the human body, meet us at kenhub.com. Oh yes, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this one. And I hope to see you on the next video.